So I'm going to talk about active uh, monitoring. And there's a big effort going on in WMUK at the moment to try and um, define this and pr produce a guide for everybody, really, doctors and patients, to, to make this more effective. Um, I'm doing this, by the way, on behalf of um, Dr. Ogilvy from Inverness, who was trapped by, by the storm in Scotland. So she sends her apologies, and we're sorry that she's not here with us. So you can see what will follow. The, the thing that makes active monitoring a thing is that not everyone with WM needs treatment straight away when they're diagnosed. And this has been known as watch and wait and um, watchful, you know, some people talk about watch and worry and all the rest of it. But I think the term active monitoring is much, much better. And I think it's being widely adopted. And the most important part of that is the active part. So what I'm going to do is mention, uh, go through, you know, the kind of points that are important to, to, to look out for. I think the, the active aspects of monitoring are that it's a conscious decision by the medical team or the healthcare team to put you on monitoring rather than to treat you. So that's an active process. The second thing is that it's a partnership between you and your healthcare team. So that's another active process. A partnership means both parties play a role. And thirdly, um, having a good understanding of your condition is very, very important because then you can manage this process without, with, with less stress and anxiety. So, um, oh, I I, sorry, I need my glasses. <laughs> so what, is, what does active monitoring look like? Well, it involves regular checkups with your consultant, clinical nurse specialist, or other members of the team to make sure that your WM does not need treatment. So this happens after that decision has been taken, uh, following the initial diagnostic workup, staging investigations, etc. And usually when you've first heard about it, you will be seen within, you know, six to 12 weeks to, to get a feel of the, the pace of change, if there is any. And then as time goes on, you, you can be seen less uh, frequently if everything remains stable. It generally takes place in the hospital outpatient clinic, but it could be increasingly, since COVID, I think this is quite common. Uh, you can either see people in person, you can have a video call, telephone, or a video call or a telephone appointment, but it does need um, a mechanism by which you have uh, blood tests, because that's how we primarily monitor WM. So what would happen at these appointments? Um, so what should happen um, is that your doctor or nurse um, will ask you, you know, how are you feeling? How have things been since your last appointment? How, has anything changed? Um, obviously, f a focus is on things like energy levels, tiredness, whether you've had any infections, whether your weight is steady, have you developed any sort of sweats? Are there any signs of um, hyperviscosity developing, especially if your IgM is maybe, you know, in, in the 30s or above? Have you noticed any new lumps or bumps? Or have you developed pains in the feet or hands or any other kind of changes really in your health. I think another very important thing that we focus a lot on now is, is of course vaccination. We heard about this earlier, very important. Uh, however they make you feel in the short term, um, I think it does reduce the risk of serious infection. Uh, it's important to know what vaccinations you're allowed and avoid any live vaccines if you have WM, irrespective of whether you've had treatment or not. We've heard a lot about other lifestyle factors, um, so I'm not going to dwell on those. Everyone has their own um, means of, of fig figuring this out because our lifestyles are, are, are very different. Um, but you should also, uh, so you can ask your, your, doc your team about this, dietary things, whether you're allowed to do certain kinds of exercise. People often ask about swimming, is it safe, etc. So by all means, ask people, clarify things when you are at the appointment. Um, and you may well get examined, um, only if you're in person, of course, um, to check, do you have any lymph gland enlargement or any other problems? Um, ideally, you should have your weight, your blood pressure, your vital signs checked. Um, this is 
doesn't always happen, to be honest, because I, I don't think this, there's a, the wherewithal for this to happen necessarily. Most, most times, it'll be done if it's clinically indicated. And then you'll have the standard gamut of blood tests, um, the blood count to check all your blood cells, uh, the kidney function, the liver function, and the um, level of antibodies and your paraprotein level. And if anything comes up from the examination, or the, the history of the examination, then additional tests may be requested. These, these tests and what you tell your team allows them to assess and monitor your WM. They don't tell the whole story, but by piecing all the information together, we get a feel for whether the condition is stable or whether there's some change. Um, and also to look out for any symptoms or triggers that may be suggesting that treatment should be considered. Now, as we've heard quite a lot, WM is a gradual disease, so it's very unusual for something to change dramatically overnight or even over a week or, or two. Um, things generally change over time, and if if you are on a sort of three-month visit, the visit may be brought forward, say, to six weeks or a month, and tests may be repeated and the, your, in, in your symptoms re-examined. Um, and then, basically, that will help the healthcare worker to discuss with you, you know, whether treatment may or may not be indicated. And this can be a, a process which spans several visits, actually, because once you've given treatment, you can't really take it away again, and that does involve immunosuppressing someone. So how would you get the most out of your appointment? Well, as Harriet mentioned, write things down beforehand, if you can. Think about what is on your mind. Um, make some notes and try and get those answered when you're in the clinic appointment or when you're speaking to someone on the phone. Taking someone with you is really helpful, I think. You know, two heads are better than one. Some people get a, a relative or someone to, to dial in if they can't make it and have them on speaker. Um, it's worth noting down any sort of significant events or unusual events like infections. It's also worth having a list of your medications, especially if they've changed from your last visit. And that may be for a completely non-WM related reason. Um, this is probably very useful, especially in my clinic. Take something to pass the time um, and help you relax in the waiting room. Um, that's a good tip. Uh, so the advantages of active monitoring are that you get treatment when you need it, because you do not want to have treatment before it is necessary. Now, I don't pretend that this is an easy thing to decide, and it, it is a very much a joint discussion that you have, you who know yourself best and your doctor or nurse. You um, also get to, I guess, maintain a pre-treatment or post-treatment but recovered quality of life period without the need for frequent, well, ingestion of, of active treatments and perhaps reduction of supportive medications for a time. And it also means that when you do need treatment, you will get the treatment you need. Um, so it's not that you're being denied anything. It's just the timing that's important. Many patients actually stay on active monitoring for many years. Some people never, ever need treatment. So it is an active process. I think that's the, the take-home message, really. Um, this I've mentioned to some extent already. Um, what about data? Uh, well, I think data is helpful at a population level. So, for example, the Mayo Clinic studied a group of patients. They followed them up for many years, and they found that uh, during that 15.4 years, 71% progressed. And, of course, the paper will be much more detailed than that. But I think reading that or conveying that to individuals is, is fine, but not necessarily that helpful. I think data doesn't re really help an individual, because data is about populations. So I think one has to be a bit careful about how one interprets data. But it, it is an opportunity to discuss possible treatment options. So I, I do dissuade people from having really detailed discussions about treatment until the time is near to actually having the treatment, because you'll forget. And new treatments actually arrive on the scene as well. But just general guidance. Tune into WMUK and all the other resources to find out what's, what's in the pipeline, for example. Um, and in terms of 
how do you live well on active monitoring? I mean, again, everyone will have their own way of dealing with this. Some people can put the WM in a cupboard between appointments and not think about it. For others, it does weigh on the mind in between times. And I think, again, reaching out to others in the way that works for you is um, is the way forward. You need, to be honest, you need to work out how to, to manage this. It's not an easy thing to do. I think having a good understanding of the disease is really important. It'll be helpful for you and arm you to be your own advocate. Um, and I think having confidence in the monitoring process. And if it's not going to plan, there is going to be a guideline soon published by the WMUK group, which has had patient and doctor involvement. And there will be a checklist as part of that, which you'll be able to download and use. Um, make contact with your clinical nurse specialist. Everyone has one, so please seek them out. And if no one turns up, find out what's going on. Um, and I think keeping a journal is, is a really good thing um, because you can keep a, a sort of record of how things are going. Um, it can also let you offload some anxieties by just putting them down on paper whenever you feel like doing that. Um, yeah, so the rest of it is fairly self-explanatory and it's actually been touched on by previous speakers. So I think um, that probably covers everything. It's just that there are resources out there that you can look for. Uh, but, you know, come to WMUK first. Thank you very much.